Earlier in this space, I commented on the several paths by which we face extinction in the near term. That video was titled, How We Go Extinct. It was followed by another short video, Why We Go Extinct. The follow-up video tackled the next obvious question, when do we go extinct? Maintaining the line of questioning for any crime scene, this short video responds to the question, what will go extinct? What will go extinct? All life on Earth. I could stop this video now, if only to move on to other activities in my so-called life, but I think some explanation is called for. According to abundant peer-reviewed literature, human activities are driving the rapid rise in global average temperature that underlies the ongoing mass extinction event. Even the Washington Post admitted in its March 15, 2021 story titled, A Forgotten Cold War Experiment Has Revealed Its Icy Secret, It's Bad News for the Planet. Even the Washington Post admitted human-caused warming is causing the Earth to warm faster now than at any other period in its history. I'd like that to sink in. One, one of the prominent mouthpieces of empire in the United States admits that the collective action of Homo sapiens are, quote, causing the Earth to warm faster than at any other time in its history, end quote. According to abundant peer-reviewed literature, the ongoing mass extinction event is one of many horrible outcomes resulting from planetary warming. As I indicated previously in this space, our untimely demise is long overdue. Again, I'm surprised we made it this long with habitat for our species remaining on Earth. After all, we are human animals. We are classified as vertebrates and as mammals, otherwise known as vertebrate mammals. As I have pointed out earlier in this space, Non-human vertebrates and non-human mammals cannot keep up with the ongoing and projected rates of environmental change. As a result, non-human vertebrates and non-human mammals are rapidly going extinct. To expect that human vertebrate mammals will somehow escape the fate faced by non-human vertebrates and non-human mammals seems like quite a leap of faith to me, otherwise known as delusion. As Oxford University Professor Emeritus for Public Understanding of Science Richard Dawkins has pointed out, quote, faith is belief without evidence and reason. Coincidentally, that's also the definition of delusion, end quote. Among the surprises, we have managed to avoid a nice free Arctic Ocean projected to occur in 2016, plus or minus three years. This linear projection appeared in a peer-reviewed article published in the 2012 edition of Annual Review of Earth and Planetary Sciences. Such an event, in the exceptionally rapid change in global average temperature to follow, would cause a loss of habitat for human animals in very short order. We have also managed to escape the loss of all life on Earth due to rapid environmental change. Such an outcome is anticipated with a 5 or 6 C increase in global average temperature in a peer-reviewed article published in Scientific Reports on November 13, 2018. We are currently about 2 C above the 1750 baseline with considerable additional heating already baked into the proverbial cake, the hot, dry cake. We have also managed to survive a pandemic so far. The reduced industrial activity associated with the pandemic likely would have caused loss of habitat for humans throughout the world had the first or third waves of the pandemic occurred during the growing season in the Northern Hemisphere. After all, the Northern Hemisphere harbors most of the terrestrial surface on Earth, as well as most of the humans and most of the vegetation. There are other means by which an existential threat could manifest quickly. For example, we are facing what has been called the McPherson Paradox by my online acquaintance and supporter, Bill Eddy. Briefly, it goes like this. Civilization is a heat engine regardless how it is powered, a conclusion based on the laws of thermodynamics and reported in at least five peer-reviewed articles by Professor Tim Garrett at the University of Utah. As I have pointed out previously, a paper by Burke and colleagues published on December 26, 2018 in the customarily conservative peer-reviewed Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences indicates, quote, climates like those of the Pliocene will prevail as soon as 2030, end quote. Mid-Pliocene temperatures were at least 2C warmer than today. Never mind that the representative concentration pathways used for this study overlook a few dozen self-reinforcing feedback loops and the aerosol masking effect. 
Any informed look at these representative concentration pathways will reveal the rapidity with which global overheating makes them obsolete. As a conservation biologist, I cannot not imagine habitat will remain for humans, or many other species for that matter, in the face of such rapid environmental change. Civilization is a heat engine, but slowing or stopping civilization heats Earth even faster than the ongoing planetary heating resulting from this set of living arrangements. The impact of the aerosol masking effect has been greatly underestimated, as pointed out in a February 8, 2019 article in Science, and then again in the July 18, 2019 issue of Geophysical Research Letters. As indicated by the lead author of the former paper during an interview on January 25th, 2019, quote, Global efforts to improve air quality by developing cleaner fuels and burning less coal could end up harming our planet by reducing the number of aerosols in the atmosphere and by doing so diminishing aerosols' cooling ability to offset global warming, end quote. The cooling effect is, quote, nearly twice what scientists previously thought, end quote. Bear in mind that the loss of aerosol masking will quickly warm the planet. However, the resulting impacts on humans must be mediated through the reaction of other organisms. The life cycle of all plants, including crops, follows seasonal patterns. As a result, immediate warming of Earth, Earth will not cause instantaneous loss of habitat for human animals. To summarize, there's no turning back. We are destroying the living planet through societal activities, yet our near-term demise is not good news for the living planet. After all, as I've indicated before, the rate of change due to loss of aerosol masking is only one reason the mess we leave in our wake spells very bad news for the remaining life on Earth. In short, we're done, and we're taking the living planet with us. I'm as displeased as anybody else by the consequences of our societal actions and therefore the short remaining time for our species. My recent scholarly work depends upon the research of others. I'm only the messenger. <laughs>